forces. Forces are all around us. From those that are a glorious spectacle of the sheer power and innovations of humanity, to those that are subtle and exist within the humblest manifestations of nature. From those that are easily seen, to unseen forces of epic proportions, protecting over us in unimaginable ways. But whether we are considering the forces we face on our small oasis here on Earth, or to those that may exist in a distant galaxy somewhere on the fringes of our enormous universe, these forces are an integral component of our ever-expanding unknown, and are one of the expressions of how the energy that permeates the entirety of space and time interacts with matter. Welcome back to the CSEC Physics Masters YouTube channel, a channel that will allow you to master CSEC physics in all its details. Now, in order for students to truly understand physics, they must understand the fundamentals of forces, as this is one of the backbones through which physics is expressed. Forces can be defined as a push or pull that is applied to an object. Mathematically speaking, it can be defined as a product of the mass and the acceleration of a body. The derived SI unit for force is a kilogram meters per second squared. And this is equivalent to the Newton, which is the SI unit name for force. Whenever a force is applied to an object, it can cause an object in motion to change its direction, a change in the velocity of an object or a change in the shape and size of the object. All forces can be categorized into one of two major groups. One, contact forces, and two, non-contact forces. As their name suggests, contact forces exist when objects physically touch each other. That is, direct contact has to be made. There are many of them from thrust to normal reaction, some of which we will be discussing in greater detail. Now, thrust can otherwise be called a push, just like the thrust of a rocket and how it pushes itself into space. When it comes down to normal reaction though, as the name suggests, this contact force is a reactionary force that takes effect with equal magnitude but opposite direction along the same line where an initial force was exerted. That initial force was the action. Another contact force that warrants discussion is friction. And friction is a force that opposes the motion of two or more bodies that are moving against each other. One should also realize and understand that wherever there is friction, there is always heat. And to reduce friction, one has to apply lubrication or oil. The metallic parts in an engine has to be well lubricated to ensure that they move against each other smoothly or else they will become damaged. Moving on to non-contact forces, we see that as their name suggests, these forces are exerted without objects physically touching each other and can thus act at a distance. Examples of non-contact forces include electric forces, which are forces that exist between electric charges. There are two types of charges, positives and negatives. And the basic law that governs them is that unlike charges attract, and like charges repel. Another popular non-contact force is the magnetic force, which exists between the poles of magnets. Each magnet has a north and a south pole, and the basic law that governs them is that unlike poles attract, meaning that they pull together, and like poles repel, meaning that they push apart. One can also take a look at nuclear forces, which is a very strong force and it exists within the nuclei of atoms. 
It is this force that binds the protons and the neutrons together and ultimately keeps them from scattering. Finally, the last but certainly not the least non-contact force is the gravitational force, which is a force that is exerted between masses. And in accordance to Newton's law of gravitation, states that everything within the universe is attracted to every other thing with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses, but inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. This is the force that supposedly holds the planets in orbit around the sun and keeps them from spiraling away into an oblivion of darkness. Now one cannot look at the gravitational force without looking at the weight of a body and how it relates to its mass. Weight is said to be equivalent to force and both of them are measured in newtons. The formula for weight is mass times gravity. And one should note that the gravitational pull of the Earth is 9.8 Newtons per kilogram. That is sometimes rounded off to be 10. Gravitational pull is referred to as the acceleration due to gravity in meters per second square. And since W is equal to F, weight is equal to force, then it therefore means that mg is equal to ma, where mg is the formula for weight MA is a formula for force. Looking at that equation, we realize that mass is common to both sides of the equation and will ultimately cancel, leaving G equal to A. Highlighting the fact that gravity is the same thing as acceleration. In essence, it therefore means that the newtons per kilogram is equivalent to the meter per second squared. Looking at these worked examples, we see some simple questions of which we can use in order to attain practice. Question 1 reads that an object of mass 60 grams experiences an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared. Calculate the force exerted by this object. Of course, you know by now that we list the values, taking the numbers out of the words. In essence, the mass is 60 grams, the acceleration is 5 meters per second squared, and we also list the force and put a question mark beside it. This is what we are being asked to find. Next thing to do is to convert. Convert to SI units. The acceleration is already in its SI unit form, but the mass is not. In which case we have to convert the 60 grams to kilograms, which will ultimately become 0.06 kilograms. After which we write the formula. F is equal to MA force is equal to mass times acceleration. Then we substitute the values into the formula and simply solve. Question 2 reads that if the weight of a body is 800 newtons, calculate its mass. Take the Earth's gravitational pull to be 10 newtons per kilogram. And likewise, we list the values. After listing the values, we pay keen attention to the units. Realizing that none of them has to be converted because they all exist in their SI unit form, we move on to the next step, which is writing the formula. Weight is equal to mass times gravity. We are being asked to find the mass, in which case the mass must become the subject of the formula and will ultimately become weight over gravity is equal to m, after which we substitute 800 newtons divided by 10 newtons per kilogram equals m. And then we simply solve. With that being said, we are now at the end of the topic of forces. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. And remember to review these videos whenever you have tests so that they can help you in passing your exams. Thank you.